Hi everybody, this is your last topic for Unit 3 Cellular Energetics in AP Biology and this topic is on fitness. It's not like fitness like let's go to the gym and lift weights and go running and stuff. It's kind of like that but not really. Um, we're only trying to make one point in this video so I imagine it'll be pretty quick, shouldn't take terribly long. Um, organisms have a wide variety of molecules, that's the first thing I wrote down here. And if you've been studying and paying attention in this class, you will know that all the different types of molecules we've studied, there, there's a lot of them. There's a ton. Um, and we haven't even had to memorize certain metabolic pathways or get into the really, really nitty-gritty detail of lots of different processes, uh, molecular processes that happen within every single organism, um, besides a few. But we have a ton ton of molecules, types of molecules, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids, just the variety of proteins by themselves is mind-boggling. Certain proteins like enzymes and receptors, they only have one other molecule that they can work with and only have one job. You know how many jobs there are for a living thing to do, for a cell to do? It's just crazy. Um, so we have a crazy mind-boggling diversity of molecules. And that seems to do pretty well for us. But a question that um, could be asked here is why do many molecules only serve one function and why do we have so many kinds? Why is it why is it a good thing for us to have so many different types of molecules? Well, let's discuss that. Um, well, in fact, you know, we have lots of different types of molecules, but we also have lots of different types of the same molecule. Um, so three examples of molecules that are that have variations that depend on certain situations or stimuli are chlorophyll, hemoglobin, and phospholipids. And we should have talked about at least at least two of these so far. <laughs> um, but chlorophyll, as we know, is the pigment molecule. It's got a magnesium ion in the middle. Um, it's the pigment molecule. It's green that allows to allows light to be absorbed by photosynthetic organisms. Um, in order to split that water molecule and get the electron transport chain going in the light reactions of photosynthesis. Um, but there's more than one type of chlorophyll. Um, if you remember way back from unit one, there are such things called structural isomers and enantiomers and cis-trans isomers. And that variation or that just the structuring of those molecules can even cause even greater variation in the molecules that we have. Um, so there are different kinds of chlorophyll. They might all be chlorophyll, they all have the same chemical formula, but they might be shaped differently. And what that shape, that just slight variation in shape, can allow those different types of chlorophyll to absorb different wavelengths of light. Are all plants green? No, they're not. They got different kinds of chlorophyll and thus absorb different types of light. Hemoglobin is another example of a molecule that we got different kinds of depending on certain situations. Um, hemoglobin, this is the protein that carries oxygen um, within your re red blood cell. So each one of your red blood cells is just basically a membrane with a bunch of hemoglobin in it. And hemoglobin, what it's able to do, uh, these red things are what we call heme groups, uh, and they have iron, and they bond to oxygen. Um, and they allow it to deliver it everywhere it needs to go within your body because oxygen, you know, it's that terminal electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, right? Um, but the thing about hemoglobin is that we got different kinds of hemoglobin at different developmental stages. So the hemoglobin that you find in a newborn baby or even in like a fetus are going to be structurally different, um, very slightly structurally different from the hemoglobin that you're going to find in an adult. Um, so in a low oxygen environment, like say while you're, you know, in the uterus is going to have a, it's, it's going to have a different function than in an oxygen-rich environment, being out in the atmosphere like this. Uh, so hemoglobin becomes different as well. And finally, phospholipids, we have alluded to this in the past, but um, phospholipids, depending on their fatty acid structure, are slight changes to the fatty acid structure can determine the membrane fluidity. So if you've got a lot of saturated fatty acids on your phospholipids, you're going to have a more rigid um, bilayer, and then it's not going to be as fluid as, say, if you have a lot of unsaturated fatty acids, which have that double bond and thus have the, the kink in the fatty acid tail. So just slight variations in molecules like these provide even more diversity. Not all chlorophylls are the same. 
not all hemoglobin is the same, and not all phospholipids are the same. So we've got all these different types of molecules, and we have different types of molecules within those molecules. So, but why is that? And here's the point that I'm trying to make, and it's, we're going to be driving this home um, a lot this year, is that having a variety of molecules allows organisms to better respond to environmental stimuli. So an environmental stimuli, what is that? Well, that's referring to any kind of change, uh, sudden, maybe sudden or gradual change within the internal or external environment. Okay, one of the things that is required for you to be a living thing is that you have to be able to respond to stimuli. And having a ton of different molecules allows us to react and respond to environmental stimuli much more easily than if we had a very small variety of molecules. So it is beneficial to organisms to have a crazy wide variety of molecules in the event something changes like an environmental stimulus. Um, and the other point I want to make here is that having a wide variety allows for a better survival and reproduction of that organism, whether it's a bacterial cell or a human being. It doesn't matter. And we're going to come back to this idea of more variation equals better survival and reproduction much more when we talk about natural selection and evolution.